throughout the pandemic, I definitely saw sleep problems through the roof. The major issues were things like loneliness. You see loneliness, and I think it's not just the loneliness, but that anxiety that I'll always be lonely because how am I going to meet people now? How am I going to see my friends? How am I going to socialize? How am I going to have a normal life? When it first started, we heard from the elderly in particular. They were anxious. They said, oh God, this one got COVID. I might get COVID. Children couldn't cope. Some were very suicidal. So they had to get adjusted academically online. So that was another thing for them to cope with. Many people didn't cope. I've seen people reaching out to the organization and family organization for a lot of different reasons. Family related issues, mm -hmm. conflict related. Mm -hmm. And I've also seen hope where people are reaching out to say, hey, how can I help? We so involved with helping others that I didn't realize I was probably going through depression because yes. I left my job in January 2020 to push Roots Foundation and then COVID. Mm -hmm. So, you know, poor people is paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. So by the time June, my mm -hmm. money done. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Insurance up. Inspection up. I have no money. And I didn't realize I was just getting up, eating, and going in my room and lying up. Mm. Nothing self engaging, talking much with my wife. Yes. Yes. Until a friend called me and asked me, How are you going? At that point, that night, I realized, What the hell? Is depressed? I'm depressed. Before this, we probably just generally didn't put as much emphasis on mental right. health. Right. It was more like, Okay, there's a disease in the air. How do we keep our bodies safe? And then we realized, Wait a minute, the thing that's really suffering here is my mental health, how I'm feeling, how I'm coping. Nobody and these are issues that were there before the pandemic, that's but right. nobody, yeah, yeah. That's right. we didn't really yeah. pay attention. Yeah. We, we were like, we, oh, we'll just drink, we, we lie, yeah. we do. We all and when those yes, things were taken all, away, yeah. the mm -hmm. mental health stuff was right. exacerbated. Or yes. for some people, they finally realized, wait a minute, there's, there's this thing yes. <laughs> that I have to yes. deal with. Just like all the fear of crime, mm -hmm. there's debilitated mm -hmm. persons, mm -hmm. the fear of this thing, be so bombarded. Mm -hmm. If there's a two-year-old child walking miles yes. to their death, yes. is women being bludgeoned to death yes. day after day? Yes. Is murders? Is school children? So children being sexually abused yeah. as well? And you know that's so. Okay. Listen, there's a lot happening with with persons. Eh? We are facing a lot. People are afraid to go back to work. Many people were not vaccinated. We have to meet with members of the public who are not vaccinated either. You know, so how are we going to cope with all of that? Maybe as we go forward, we can have a hybrid system offered to employees who can, you know, work from home. Some companies, of course, yes. have been proactive with it because if I yes. want productivity, I need to make sure that they're okay. That's another thing, that shift in organizational culture mm -hmm. in this country, mm -hmm. and maybe the world over, because we realize now that the bottom line will not be met, yes. as you yes. said, Ken if your mental health is not intact. So let's take care of our staff. Self-care, self-compassion. What, what yeah. we show to a friend, we must show to ourselves too. Mm -hmm. Because we now have to increase demand, so now mm -hmm. but you can't say no. Yeah. Well, you see uh, that? Yeah. <laughs> you see what you just said? No, but this is where self-care <laughs> comes in. How do you say in. no? Yes. Self-care means saying no. And I'm not say, saying no. You just have to say Can you call me back tomorrow? That is self-care, you know. Going to the grocery. When you come back in your car, stay in your car and play a game on your phone, you know, before you go back to face what is inside. We, we have a very collectivist society mm -hmm. and it's sometimes it's very difficult for us to deny other people yeah, things, right. deny mm -hmm. other people what they want of us. Mm -hmm. And we feel that guilt, you see, guilt, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. feel that guilt mm -hmm. not su supplying others with mm -hmm. pieces of ourselves. Mm -hmm. But especially with this pandemic, it got increasingly harder to do that. Yes. And so that's where you have the burnout and the overwhelm. That's where the outbursts happen, where mm -hmm. it's like, I just yelled at the kids and I, you know, I just can't handle it. I just stopped caring and I, mm -hmm. I, I'm just numb and all of these kinds of things. That's people being overwhelmed and not, again, is they not knowing how to cope. And we have to have boundaries and boundaries mm -hmm. is not a four letter word. I try to say that all the time. Mm -hmm. They are very nice, sweet ways to have boundaries, but it starts within us. And we have to have boundaries to up to prevent ourselves 
from yeah. those outbursts and from becoming super overwhelmed because then you cannot give. You have nothing to give. Yes. If you've given it all, what 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 you can't do it left? well at all. You can't do it well. Yeah. A vegan has senses to tell you when something is going to happen or something has happened. Hmm. What is your natural sensor that tells you, hey, I need to be honest with myself here? Emotional awareness. You talk about emotions. We see that displayed by those children who are fighting after yeah. school. Yeah. How are they controlling the emotions that they feel? So these children have been traumatized. These children were home for two years. I mean, those school is an escape for a lot of young people. Eh? So they home with that abuser, be it physical, emotional, sexual, the home with that abuser. Right? The violence in some communities, those children were exposed to that almost 24 hours. What we need to do with these children, first we need to really have these type of conversations with them. Yes, you'll be angry. I get angry when I see the amount of fights, right? But we have to find a space to talk with these children. Hello, how are you going? It's a powerful word, you know? If we could help kids have relationships, whether it's mentorship, a safe family member, a sa and I'm saying safe, a safe neighbor, a safe somebody, even if you don't want to take a child to therapy, but you have a safe person who can kind of be there for your kid. Falapantin disease, others um, thing called lack of cultural arrogance. We engage in these children and a child just belt out so and so. Mm -hmm. Some sort of obscene language. Yes, you're not indulging and encouraging that type of language, but you want a child to you don't know what else coming after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. You might say now I've been abused. I ain't saying compromise your values and the system. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to help these young people mm -hmm. and we want them to know we genuinely trying to help them. I recently had a conversation with one of my young men. His aunt had died, right? And it was really a, a blow to all of us because mm -hmm. she was Tanti. Mm -hmm. I don't want to carry that title, Tanti. It's a big one, mm -hmm. right? I didn't realize how much it affected him until we had that conversation about him. Because I spoke to him and said, I find you regressing. He is not the person I have seen grown over the years. Mm -hmm. so, Tanti gone. We don't know how much persons deal with grief like that. Yes. Because we might just say, okay, the cousin died from COVID. It's about the loss of someone who was there for you. How do we cope with that grief? We really have to take a lot of time with ourselves until we reach the stage of acceptance when we say, well, right they'll be here no longer. I, I was not able to say goodbye. Children dealing with grief. Mm -hmm. Parents have to be able to, to, identi to yeah. identify that it's triggers. Mm -hmm. As a parent, you should seek to say, hey, if I'm dealing with this, what are you picking off of me? Mm -hmm. But particularly with death, right. we don't think children do, and but they do. One of the things that we have to address is how do you know that your child is struggling? Yes. So we could look at cognitive, behavioral, emotional and even physical mm -hmm. sort of symptoms, right? If so they're having trouble with problems remembering things, mm -hmm. if they have behavioral changes, significant for a, a period of time, not like a day of a bad mood type of thing, but like for a significant enough period of time, um, locking themselves away, um, outbursts, kind of just doing things like they don't play with the dog anymore, just things that their behaviors have changed, their patterns have changed. I remember I was very small to my grandmother and all her granny friends, you know, and this tante was so dying, so mm -hmm. healing. Mm -hmm. And we were home by her the night, mm -hmm. singing the same and I there holding tante hand. I saw tante close her eyes mm -hmm. and then granny then started to pray. Mm -hmm. So I said, what happened? She said, tante gone. I said, the tante died. I said, why? No. And then my grandmother said, <laughs> God took her back. Mm -hmm. eh? And my response was, I don't like God. Oh. I just like remember that very distinct and then God started to explain to me well. Yes. Not, that, not that God is a bad mm -hmm. being, but you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to understand how children view. Mm -hmm. right? you, know, you have to finish the conversations. Don't just drop something and yeah. leave it. But we don't say it for them for their ears. Yeah. We, we say it for us to check. I've spoken to the <laughs> yeah. about this. Uh, no, so all of you spoke about here. Yeah. Mm. 
I feel like a sound is in one word, communication. Hmm. Good. That is very mm-hmm. key. We need to communicate yeah. in ourselves. Mm-hmm. We just yes, know yeah. when we're hungry. Mm-hmm. We don't have to use the washroom. Mm-hmm. When we're sleepy, mm-hmm. we must know we're feeling this and now this anxiety mm-hmm. coming on. As a society, I want us to individually jump out with skin and look in. Hmm. And then jump back in and look out. And in looking at self, please be honest with self. Well, I'd like to see that people get with the program. This is COVID. It's, it's going to be here with us for a very long time. And we have to cope. To cope, we must. We must go back to work. Let's try to adapt to that. Let's seek help. Let's use the services that are there for us from the Ministry of Health. Let's use it. It's there. It's free. Check the psychologist. When we need help, we must seek help to do better. I'd say I would like to see that we keep sharing. The more we share that mindset of if my mental health is off or I have a bad day or whatever, I'm going to do something about it. And there are resources to help you deal with it. This doesn't have to be the end. This doesn't have to be your reality. We are with locals. We are encouraging all of society to be mental health macros. So, so we're not drinking water and minding your own business. In this case, drink your water and make sure you tell somebody yes. when you mind your business, where they can get you. Right. Yeah, that's the part. <laughs> where to get you really really Because if we go back to it takes a village, uh, being your brother's keeper, those things have merit and I want to see those things come back because everybody's looking for support. So why mm-hmm. don't we support each other? And one of the questions people always ask is, but why are they coming to me? Why me? But when I was younger, somebody asked me, why not you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When somebody calls you, they're looking to get something from you to help them move from point A to point B. Yeah. So why not you? Yeah. Who's the one here? Hmm? Who's the one? Who is the one? Oh! <laughs> <laughs>